Hi, Alex. How are you doing? All right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. In the crowd, you're having fun. Your voice is screaming loud. Get attention, you got some action. You make your daddy proud. Sounds of conquest, it happens all the time. And the guys get a trophy by cause you know Cause I'm a bad boy rugger Cause I'm a bad boy Cause I'm a bad boy Cause I'm a bad boy rugger Bad boy, rock and roll. Rock and roll. Yes. <laughs> Thank you for this uh, free performance for us. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me here, Christina. It's a wonderful, yeah. wonderful to be here. And let me say that I want to thank um, Tarja Virmakari for putting us in touch from Metal Shop yeah. Finland. She's um, a gem. So uh, it's yeah. wonderful. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you, Taria. And uh, for those that are interested to know more about Taria, there is an episode with Taria also. So okay. check that out. But awesome. how are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you so much. I'm here in the south of Italy. I'm enjoying the sun, I'm enjoying uh, good vibes, uh, really, really high frequencies from my actually also guitar and the Tibetan singing balls. With I know I do a lot of uh, sound bath healing. Um, uh, singular uh, individual treatments so I make people feel good with this sound that is really uh, actually <laughs> therapeutic calm, therapeutic exactly and people say thank you so much and people actually <laughs> ask me what what it's for you know singing balls and rock music there's no difference the only thing is intention of the person who does everything he does for the best of himself and for other people yeah. so i really enjoy make make people happy with the guitar with rock and roll and in fact you already listen bad boy rocker there was a feature in a movie called senior moment uh it's a hollywood movie uh by the director Giorgio serafini uh with stars uh william shatner you know remember shatner from uh yeah. he was the captain kirk from uh star trek and christopher lloyd uh doc from, from back to the future yeah <laughs> yeah so yeah the the movie uh, was released in the mo in the cinemas in 2021. Wasn't and... Okay, 10, 2021. I was thinking and that it was been... before, but not. <laughs> no, it was recorded. It was shot uh, back in um, three, four hours, uh, uh, three, four years later. Uh, before, sorry, my English Italian. I have to like adjust a little bit. Yeah, yeah, don't worry. This is this is a <laughs> this this is a, a podcast in which. Uh, uh the language mistakes or uh, accent uh, is not a problem because i do mistakes mistakes all the time and my accent is strong so whatever <laughs> let's whatever. let's just it's be just, yeah. ourselves <laughs> yeah i love the vibes and you have a good good smile you have a good vibration so i like to be here and as i was saying that yeah the, sh the movie was shot for like in 2017 or something and it was like uh released uh, years later you know the movie the, the movie industry it's pretty interesting how fun it is you can um it's 
there's there's a gap between like there's lives going yeah. on and people like change and you see like actors like uh, I I saw um, Joaquin Phoenix like in Venezia so be- because he shot you know the la- the, the Joker uh, number two uh, the second one and he was like really skinny and then you see it like back in the shape so it's really it's really interesting how you see people changing and how how yeah. the movie you know is. Um, did you watch the movie? You mean the um, senior the, moment? The one, one? Yeah. Yeah, they sent me to the uh, from from New York. Actually, thank you, Dalila. Delilah Crieli. It's a great photographer, and she shot like many great rock stars, like uh, uh, including Kiss, uh, um, Dead Daisies. She toured with them uh, recently um, in, in the USA, and we met mm. in Vegas when I was opening for Anvil. Anvil, you know, Anvil the band. Yes, and yes. So uh, she was there, and she was like working with them. So she started taking picture uh, at me because she was like, she told me she. We became also great friends. She was happy to see me performing at the Rio Casino in Vegas, where also Anvil was there, and we became friends. And it, it's great to have Delilah in my life as a great photographer, as a great friend, as a great person who really believed in. Uh, we lives in in rock and roll, and she really goes out and uh, takes a lot of amazing, great pictures. And um, she sent me the DVD. So I, uh, because the DVD, um, the movie is released, is being released, has been released in America, uh, UK, and I think Australia too, but not okay. in Italy yet. Um, we're still waiting. Yeah, may- maybe one day. <laughs> but uh, how did you end up to work with, I mean, uh, how your music end up in the movie? So, okay, in 2019, I had the honor to open for Ted Nugent. So I toured with him for seven gigs between California and America. It was the uh, make, uh, I have this here. <laughs> I have the big poster here. So the music made me do it again, 2019. And um, so the director, Giorgio Car- Serafini, uh, came to see the show and he was like really blown away by by the energy and say alex i want to put your song one of your songs uh, in the movie so we had a meeting after that and so the, the bad boy rocker was the was the last choice nice that's so and cool. i feel lucky because also now maybe next uh, we will talk about you know the tour with ted and... yeah you know um there is this uh law of attraction I don't mm-hmm. know. Did you did you read the book? The book there was. I I I'm not sure. The secret. The name. The secret. Yeah. Uh huh. So. Yeah. When you, as a, you were talking about good vibes and those things, mm-hmm. when you have the those good vibes, uh, the good things come to you at some point, and uh, it's uh, it's it's true actually, because I yeah. myself okay. experience. Uh, sometimes it takes many years. And sometimes it's more fast, but uh, if something is is meant to be and you work on it and you believe in it, then it's going to happen. So all great things are going to happen if if you think great. Absolutely. And can I tell you a story about this if you want? Yeah, I want to hear. (laughs) So thank you. Um, It was uh, 2008 and I went to see in London. It was the Arena O2. Also, where the last um, it was Michael Jackson was shooting uh, the movie, the last one, you know, I think uh, this yeah. is it or something like that. So it was the big arena, and I went there to see Ted Nugent in 2008. 2008, um, I saw him. I was blown away by his energy and you know, the music. It was he was amazing, and it was better than the video that I used. I grew up listening to ACDC. I went to see ACDC. I went to see uh, ZZ Top. So the when I when I was a little kid, you know, I was blown away by the energy the the vibes that were delivering by the stage and i was like hey i want one day i want to i want to play this music you know because it really affects my soul and i feel good vibes uh, positive energy so i went to see ted uh because he was doing a i think a european tour or something like that so i went to see him in 2008 and it was so great better than the videos so i was like like that i was like in front of like front line <laughs> it's like oh my god this is cool this is even cooler than than you know video and stuff so it was like i was was really like drowned by his energy that i was 
um, telling myself that one day I'm gonna meet him. Some somehow, I don't know how, but but then I was like, I saw him in 2014 when I, when I when I was in Los Angeles that I that I flew in the first time after uh, um, a, a little tour that I did with my dad in 2009 just for for vacation. So I went for my first time as a musician in 2014. And I saw him playing live for the second time, and then I saw, and then I saw him for this for the third time. But then, uh, in the, at the third time, I saw him because I was opening for for him in 2019. It took me like ten nine years because I was like. But now that I'm a spiritual, uh, my job is also like a, I do. I'm a spiritual quantum coach, so I help people in reprogram. From the subconscious, uh, bad um, fears, uh, like uh, bad habits, uh, because our subconscious is really like messed up everything. So I help people in, in reprogram with positive um, formulas uh, in believing themselves. So everything yeah. is positive, and I'm, even I'm positive. I really enjoy my life. I do workout, and I do. I I eat good. I I feel great most of most of my life it's great like that so uh my body is like a temple you know like i like i love him we have to like cherish him and honor it it's, it's really cool and then i found myself like opening for ted and this is how the law of attraction works but if you yeah but between years i was studying guitar i was mm, I, I made a band I, I formed a band in italy but you know i wasn't so you know i've done everything in italy it's it's not that uh, really good for uh, <laughs> rock music. So I was, um, my my soul was telling me things with the subconscious that I didn't know. It was like, I need to go, I need to go, I need to do something better for my life. So I went to the United States and then um, I started from zero. So I, I played the Viper Room, the Whiskey A Go Go. You know, I started, you know, from the scratches. And then all of this brought me to Open for Ted. You know, yeah, in, yeah, in yeah. It's uh, if if you think it's uh, it's crazy how things that uh, we just dream about then beca be they become true, and we live them. And uh, the people don't understand how fear can be an obstacle for. Uh, their life for our life so yeah. uh, we should get rid of fears uh, but sometimes it's not easy because uh, people have traumas and all those things so they need to work exactly through that and uh, there are people that are able to work by themselves uh, and get uh, through through a better a better door let's see and yes. then there are those other people that they need guidance but sometimes it's uh, for people it's hard to um how to say to accept that they need someone else help absolutely yeah and so that's 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 the problem maybe I think you, you you say the right thing. I, I think it's more than a help. It's like a guidance. So you need it, it's it's a, it's to understand that at one point in your life you need to uh, go over the cliff. Like you need to really uh, get out from the comfort zone and feel that you need to do something good for your life. So uh, like you said, bad memories or uh, traumas can really deal with all that stuff and. I tell everything to my people here in the channel and stuff. So I need to have them understand that even a walk, take a walk. So listen to music, uh, good music that really makes your heart vibrate and resonate with your soul. So love music that it's love for your heart. I mean, like we have from Gregorian music to heavy metal, right? So 200 years of music. So you can put like 12 hours in the in the background while you're doing your choice and stuff so it's great and yeah you you resonate with the music so yeah and Even music me, is music. therapy exactly so i studied I'm, i've been studying and never learning never stop learning uh that our musician we are actually giving people like 
something to um, make them feel good from our playing. So the notes that we create, the music, it's already um, therapeutic. Music yeah, is that's therapeutic. True. Do, so do you play bass, right? Well, I should start again to play something, uh, but y y yeah, I use more to play. Now I'm, I've been uh, not playing that much, uh, and that's uh, uh, this is an ac acoustic ba bass. Uh, okay. The two bass, that the electric bass, uh, they are still in Italy. At some point, they will come. They were <laughs> supposed to come this summer from, with me back to Finland, but then life happened. I was sick, so I was like not up to go and uh, check okay. where they are and. Okay. So next next year they are they are coming to Finland with me because uh, they are amazing. <laughs> they are amazing, I and know. I miss yeah, them. I and uh, for how much I love also this acoustic one, the my Fender Jets and uh, the, the other bass that I have, the, the sound is different. The, the the vibration that you get from the instrument right. is is, is different. It's it's more. It's it's more. <laughs> it's something more. Yeah. Awesome. But uh, how did you get uh, to to be? How did you become spiritual? Uh, is something that you were always, or is something that you learn with time? How it happened? Uh, thank you for the question. Um, I think, like I was saying before, um, I felt something inside of me that was uh, guiding me. Uh, being uh, like, I went to Los Angeles and I was um, always struggling because I was feeling anxious. I was like, "Oh my God, I have, I need to like because the first time I was there for three months, actually eighty nine days. So I need to like concentrate and be focused on the next gig because I didn't have a manager. So it was like that was every every month was my last shot because i need to i needed to like make something happen quick so uh with with a uh, jumping rope uh helped me um along alongside the nutrition and um body weight workout was actually centrating i was uh, focused on being really into the workout and actually was kind of sort of a meditation but actually i found out that later later on like four years ago, but I was living, I actually, I knew that, you know, um, working out releases uh, your endorphin, your dopamine, your stamina. So you're into the point where you feel good. So I, I was also like struggling with sugar and uh, sugar is the worst, the worst that we can have because really like makes your brain foggy. And I was like completely, I was on one side sad and not depressed, but uh, like um, anxious to, do everything like good because you know i was you know i'm italian and i was making myself an establishment to play in all these clubs but you know every time i played the, I, I, play, I think i played the viper room like 10 times but every time at the 10 at the 10 times it was like uh, okay this is home but i needed to do something better you know like uh for myself because the first time it was like great you know the viper room the second time yeah but i was dealing every day because after that night, it was gone, you know, like I needed to mm -hmm. like do something quick and the spiritual stuff was already in me, but I didn't know. So with the study of the spiritual quantum coaching, the, T the Tibetan singing bowls and the, the quantum physics that I'm studying and how we relate with ourselves, because if we are in good vibes and that, that started from cutting a little bit the sugar because I knew that my, um, um my my feelings were really like up and down right? up and downs all the time and um, working out with good diet like um you know ketogenic diet and intermediate fasting was amazing for me so i really like lost 10 pounds and i really became really um um one piece like yeah. okay i needed to like find concerts but i was focused and I didn't have my subconscious like fear or anxious um, taking me away taking me on the other side you know the dark side because the game gets really like uh, it takes you it takes you it's like Voladores from uh, Don Juan and uh, Castaneda 
uh, the voladores or the, yeah. the bad energy that like flies around you when you feel something and it's bad they really they are ready to suck on you they suck your energy you know every time we are dealing with this even me every day you know i can you know i have there my kettlebells and i do kettlebells workout now that i love them and i feel that i'm uh, every day like constantly constantly christina dealing with my brain that sabotage us every day all the time because you know, you know i'm, so, I'm it's... tired but yeah, it, it's 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 fun about the brain and the sugar because uh, <laughs> uh, the the brain likes the sugar, and if you give a bit of sugar, he wants more and more and more. It's uh, exactly it's interesting. It's a uh, yeah. yeah it, it doesn't it. need it doesn't need that much, uh, but th there is needed of sugar, of course, uh, the, in the the normal. But uh, then. The fact that is uh, the brain get a a to the to the sugar that wants more yeah. and more and more, it's crazy. And uh, yeah, I sometimes find myself to eat too much uh, sugary things. Mm -hmm. I try to control myself, mm -hmm. but yeah, it's it, it depends. It depends. But <laughs> I, understand. I understand. No, it's good to indulge sometimes. It's good to like yeah. Um, do something different but like we also like metal pizza so but you know pizza in the united states it's different pizza in the united states it's so full of carb but uh refined carbs you know like ingredients that are crappy and yeah. one slice one slice is like more than 600 calories it's something that it's hard to deal with and yeah to me i didn't know about all this stuff in the beginning because something i knew but I started studying about, you know, I was like down with my energy and I took like, I was taking like candy bars, like Reese's. It's, it's, it's like made of chocolate and peanut butter. Yeah, and I know and that was... I never taste. <laughs> oh, well, I taste it last December because it was 50% uh, uh, on sale in a store uh -huh. here in Finland. So I was like, let's try. But yeah, I don't get you the know, hype those... for that. <laughs> I know, but I was like, oh my God, it's so cool. It's so... because I'm a, I'm a sugar addict and I'm, 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 I have a sweet tooth. So it, uh, for me, it was like really like a battle between me and myself. So in one Reese's is 180 calories. Can you believe like you eat one Reese's and then you have other stuff like other carbs and it's really takes you over, takes you really over the, yeah, jumps you over. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's uh, it's crazy, but but also your brain can deal with fat, eh? yeah. Because sugar raises your insulin; that insulin makes you fat. So yeah. we want to have the insulin down, so uh, we burn fat really yeah. quick. Also, like doing intermittent fasting and high inter high intensity interval training. Yeah, and uh, you know we are what we eat. They say. Yeah. Also. And uh, <laughs> yeah. and one of the thing that i always uh, yeah. say to people in general is that uh, you should listen to your body because your body not not to listen too much to the brain when we talk about food but your body ask for certain food at certain time there is the moment that i know that i want to to eat uh, spinach and i go for that because my body is asking so i need that so you you need just to to listen to it uh, and it's going to tell you what what it needs at, it's at good, least exactly. for me it's like this it's also great to have your brain like um jump into a good habit like you should have a green every day so like i work out every day and now i'm every yeah my brain start maybe saying no i'm tired i'm tired don't do it it's like a little devil it's like hey alex don't work out because you're tired but then no i was like oh no i need to and once i did it once i've done it i feel great i feel like i can like uh do twenty thousand miles you know like running but even with food if we adjust and we have a good habit it turns into you know uh, regular lifestyle so yeah. diet actually in, uh, comes from good eating it's not a diet diet it's um as people think it's a restriction and 
the deprivation of something that you actually sometimes you like you know i like pizza i love pizza i love pasta in italy we have you know still uh, the fda is not uh is not here so we have uh still ingredient but in the south is is amazing in the south of italy uh thanks to the universe that i'm here also to my to my parents that we are we are here together so we escaped from the north when we were you know like <laughs> it was like bad times but you know here we have olive trees the sun the the food uh people are people are great people even even you know how the behavior uh people actually are amazing they help each other there's a lot of uh communities there live the great life you know like simple life yeah 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 that's true but let's get to your music because um you play power rock with yeah. uh, a trio you are a trio and you release uh, the album bed bad boy rocker in 2015 exactly and uh, it was a success but are you working on new music so what's going on now yeah so bad boy rocker was also re-released in 2018 for my tour with ted nugent and um, you know i put a uh, new um, new music there but now you can hear it on spotify itunes is everywhere so i can sell it but i'm working to uh, having my new album that I the, already recorded and it's new. I, I have a new album ready to be, I know I, I'm still um, finding a, a good um, a dealership with um, distribution because, you know, um, the fact that I want to actually have it played on tour, it's what I want. It's what I need yeah. to now do to do it's like um, may, um doing more shows and sell my album my new album on on you know after my shows you know at my shows i think the album maybe can call um, i know the title but let's do it it's unleash the beast or okay and uh, what can we expect from this album is going to be uh similar to the previous one or there is different uh, uh different sounds uh? you know this album um is gonna be much more um, power in a power rock style so because uh, i recorded in in north hollywood and i was around by people who really understood how you know um, the, the great thing was um um, the teamwork with you know great musicians that i that i play with uh the sound engineers um you know the studio where also like the no doubt play there uh other great bands and uh, you know hollywood it, it, you know the fact that you you smell the air of rock and roll in these places it's great so i was really inspired every day by um writing music i was living uh, right across the Warner Brothers so I was also walking a dog and my dog and I was there I had a dog so it was awesome because uh, you know I was like overwhelmed by the music inspiration so you know like I was playing the whiskey the Viper all these people like and also uh, Ted Nugent's song Rock Nugent uh, is is in the album so we we had a feature uh him for uh, in an, in a song and i'm really happy I'm, I'm really honored that he was there so he came to the studio and recorded so i think it's 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 much more powerful because also I was really inspired by how uh tranquil and really more calm i was in, in instead of the first uh the first time that i was in the, in the united states so i had the time to um be inspired playing my riff my music and be around uh you know rock and roll yeah yeah and what kind of a uh, thematic uh, are the songs about um so when i write music first is uh <laughs> i play guitar so i 
yeah, I come from a riff first. So uh, I, I, I play around and I, I feel that uh, the drum, it's, it's, I have a music 24 hours a day, Christina. So for me, it's like, and then I feel like I have to like uh, go to the guitar and, and, and start composing a riff. And then I, um, I go to the studio, actually, uh, the lyrics for this album came like a week before going to the studio. Okay. The music was already done, the music, so I listen to the music and then I create the story on this. But I'm a very visual person. So when I create a song, for example, uh, there's a song called, uh, in the new album, um, Lady Horsefly. So I, I see myself uh, rowing into the river because there's also a story around this that I was like sting by a really low horse. It was a whole um, big, huge horsefly. And, but mm. I, I create a story of um, how uh, in, I feel, I visualize how the summer is hot and we are uh, in the boat together with a really beautiful girl. And at one point she bites me in the right spot. And then <laughs> I, I, I create something that can be sexual, but actually it's it's like poetry, you know. It's it's positive, yeah. and I, I I get stung by by her, but I can I can have uh, um, I want more. So it's like it's something like really interesting. Yeah. But the song also is really rock and roll, so I like that. Yeah, yeah, and we have just to wait to to hear your new music. So everybody should go and follow you on social media and uh, YouTube and so on. But um, talking uh, about uh, you and music, when did you start to play and sing? Okay, so I was really young. I was like 12 years old. I was uh, playing around Milan in clubs, like dressed by Blues Brothers. So I was like really in love with John Belushi, Dan Aykroyd. So I was like, going around in clubs and cabarets, like they were like stand-up comedies. It was like the only kid I was 12 years old that was playing like in, dressed up like Blues Brothers playing those music. You know, that music was like really my, my, my religion like that, you know? And then um, I started playing with bands and then I, I, I play guitar like Eric Clapton. I, I was like pretty late, like 19 years old. I went to my teacher and then he was like my, what a great guy. He played with uh, Duke Heroy, played with me and I would play like with um, Gianni Morandi, like people chilling, Adriano Celendano was like um, a session guy, but he played for a lot of people and it was like really amazing. And he started me from the scratch. So if you feel like, This is like, I didn't know anything about guitar. I was like a showman. I was playing around. But then, like, even play this. This is like, you know, blues, kind of like, because I wanted to know more. And then, but in the beginning, it's like that. <laughs> And I was going, I was going to bed, actually. Actually, my first teacher was Kiko Santulli from... Um, uh, the group Italiano, you know, Tropicana, yeah, you remember that yeah. song? Yeah, yeah. So he, I went to record by some music from the Blues Brothers to his studio and he told me, Alex, you need to, you need to, you need to know how to play an instrument. So he put, the, he put me the guitar in my hand and he tuned the guitar in the way that I could play with just one finger. So I started and I went to bed with the guitar. I was like, I, I fell in love because it was, it, strange how life goes because i used to have a classic guitar hangout on my you know room wall and i didn't want to like play because you know my parents like gave me for for a, for a gift but you know all the cd and stuff but i didn't have like a like a switch like a snap of light of inspiration that my this guy you know kiko gave me and then claudio claudio bazzari my teacher you know taught me for 10 years or so and then in the beginning do this Really slow, no? A lot of stomach ache. A lot of stomach ache because you have to like also, you know, adjust your finger, you know? It's it's not usual, it's, it's unusual. And then you, you know, you practice also because in with the, our conscious mind, because it's stupid, 
we are trying to it's like um uh, driving a car in the first time you know you have to be careful and you know you have to be you know focused on how to um drive your wheel and yeah. see the switch you know everything you have to be you know aware yeah, and then cool. yeah everything when you when you start doing when you when you feel cautious everything goes in the subconscious and then i can talk i can even talk yeah. when i when i when i play you know it's all great but in the beginning i couldn't do this playing and singing like that so a lot of time so it takes practice yeah. practice practice yeah but what kind of uh, gear do you use? What kind of guitar do you have? You can see in the back that my first Gibson Les Paul. Okay. In America, I still have my guitars there. I have one uh, Gibson Gold Top, uh, one ES-137 that it looked like a, uh, it's a Birdland, like kind of like a Birdland. Here in Milan, I have a Birdland, a Gibson Birdland. So I'm a Gibson guy. I also have a Stratocaster. Um... I can start to guess, yes, trap. But no, I'm also, I think I'm a Gibson guy. Yeah, I see, I see it. <laughs> I can tell it. And uh, talking about uh, music in general, when did you get into rock music? Do you remember what the artist or band got you to say, okay. this is it, this is it? Okay. Uh, like I was telling before, Elvis Presley, Jerry Lee Lewis, um, Elmore James, uh, John Lee Hooker, the Blues Brothers. Um, I was into this music, the soul, the rhythm, and blues. But then I was 14, and then I and my first album was High Voltage by. No, actually, the first one was Stiff Upper Lip from ACDC. And that really got me. I said, "Wow, I love this yeah. combination, of, you know, between blues and rock and roll. I love the riffs. I love." And I started like uh, eating those albums, you know, like, and then came Ted Nugent, Van Halen, all that stuff. So, yeah. And now what, what kind of music are you listening? Uh, for example, what did you listen uh, this week? If you listen something. Oh, that's a good question. So I have also, there's a good band from Germany that I really like. Uh, they call Hardbone. I don't know if you ever heard yeah, about them. Yeah, Har Harmon, yeah. Okay. I saw them. Was it last really? year? Yeah, yeah. Where? No, it's uh, where? Uh, here in, in Pori, in Finland, at okay. the Pori Spere. And I okay. took photos of them Yeah, when they were on stage. Yeah. How you <laughs> like was, them? Yeah, it was, it was a good uh, gig, uh, very energetic. Okay. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, also they, re they remind us a little bit of Airborne, too. Yeah. Yeah, am I am, am I remembering yeah. right? I'm I'm not sure, but yeah. <laughs> so I try to remember everything it was last year when it was where it was, but I think it that was yeah maybe maybe okay. I'm not oh, sure. You mean, oh, okay, okay. I have I have I have to check because I can't I can't remember, but yeah. And so I really you love have the been... last. Uh... The last Judas Priest album that I saw them in, in Milan with Saxon. Oh, Jesus Christ. I love them so much. I mean, I'm not a big fan, but the last the last two albums, like Firepower and uh, We... Uh, oh, my God. How do you, what, What's his name? Windshield. Uh, not Windshield. The Shield. Aspetta, eh? Ah, come è che si chiama? Mia. I'm quite quite bad to remember the name of albums and all all those things. I'm I try my best, but uh, my memory is not uh, is is not good anymore. <laughs> Invincible Shield. Ah. Invincible Shield. Yeah. And uh, do you remember which? was your first what was your first uh, uh gig rock gig that you attend that you went to to see oh my first um i think the uh the first gig that i saw i mean like a band yeah okay uh acdc i guess it was acdc okay. 
And then ZZ Top. See, because ACDC. First one was ACDC. Yeah, yeah. In Torino. In when... Torino. 2001. Yeah. Okay. And how, how was... Uh, because, you know, sometimes we all uh, have those expectations. Was the gig mm -hmm. that good as you expect? Was it even better or was worse? No, it was even better. Like, uh, you, you, you see your heroes coming alive. Also, it was good because it wasn't the old, the old stadium, the old stadium. So they took like a uh, like a like a piece of it, and I I could see Angus like dressed in green, and Brian Johnson was all black. And all you know, I saw the old band. It was like, oh my God, they're here! I'm I'm really like into this, and I have, I still remember people like um, uh, at my side were like, oh look at that Angus that he's doing! Oh my God, he's great. <laughs> It was like you know, uh, like a, a ritual. We're we're there all the same to like singing their songs, and uh, you know you can see, you can feel the good energy coming from like mm -hmm. this. It's it's amazing. I was like, oh, and I also I was like, that's what, that's what I told you. Like I I came I came out that stadium. There was like one day I'm gonna play live shows like this. That was my yeah. first like yeah. snap of light like this. <laughs> Yeah, that's great. It's always great when, uh, uh, in particular, the first uh, gig that you attend uh, give you that that something that change your life in a way. Absolutely. Yeah. What was yours? My first gig, uh, the first gig that I attend was uh, uh, in Trieste. Was that 2000, 2001, maybe also? Oh, thank you. Uh, and it was uh, in Trieste in the Pala Sport and uh, was a uh, Blink 182. Oh, okay. And uh, as uh, opener, as opening, uh, as support, uh, there were the Deftones were playing. Okay. okay. And uh, 14 years of, away. 15 years old i was 15 years old christina didn't know anything about different uh, genres music uh, for me music was music and uh, i just enjoy everything that uh, sound sounded good to me and uh, it's it's quite fun when i think uh, that when i was a kid i was enjoying uh, some metal music for example but i didn't know that that was metal because no one told me but at the same time i was enjoying also some pop and euro dance and things okay. like this so then it came i was introduced to you know metal music through through nightwish sonata artica okay and, okay children of bottom and all those finnish bands <laughs> <laughs> but uh, bro brought me here at the end. <laughs> Dimo Borgir. <laughs> the, I saw Dimo Borgir uh, actually for the first time last June. Okay. Or July. Uh, Ju oh, nice. June. It was end of June. Yeah. Okay. So, ev 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 you know, it's, it's fun when you have been uh, listening to a band for a long time and then you see live. It's... Uh, it's interesting. It just brings memories. It's very interesting. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, it brings up memories, of course. Yeah, but let's get to the questions because there was the, there was a question for you, or maybe two. Now I have to find it. It's here somewhere. I should stop to post so many things on my Facebook, so it's easy to to, <laughs> to find it. <laughs> But uh, there is a Maura Marcher, Marcer, Marcher, Marcer, Marcer uh, again, Marcer, 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 Grande Maura. <laughs> so I'm going but to ask in English. Yeah, See? I'm going to ask uh, in English so everybody can understand. Um, yeah, how does uh, your uh, riff and uh, lyrics uh, um, start? Uh, how, how 
do you get inspiration when when you okay. get a riff? What how how does it work? So I really get into what is um, the music of uh, inspiration from playing guitar and being inspired by you know all these amazing guitar players that I that I also listen to it. I want to have them you know live on by my music like. You know, in, in a modern way, like uh, I used to listen, you know, Stevie Ray Vaughan, uh, Richie Blackmore, Angus Young, uh, Ted Nugent, but also like I'm, I'm putting all my, all, all this music into my fingers that I want to have them, you know, get getting out as a, it's like unleashing a beast of um, powerful music and that you feel in your soul, like blues, rock and roll, like. I see myself when I play my guitar on stage. When I want to have its freedom to be completely out of the cage, out of the box and unleashed by my music. And I won't have my music guides me into what is the realm of um, happiness, enjoyment, because I want to see myself when I play that riff, I want to be sure that I'm going to enjoy it in 10 years. In fact, what happened with my first song it was Call of the Wild and Bad Love and then, you know, Bad Boy Rocker. I still love it. It's all every every song is my baby. So I, I really I, I I never get used to not to love them. You know, like I, I love them so much. And when I start playing the riff, I make sure that I like it. And so I start. Mm, running to my mind running to my soul and i like it i don't want to also be like i don't want to copy too much so i think all my inspiration come from all these amazing people that you know i listen to but i want to give my touch i want to give my craziness happiness uh the blues that i come from because i also i come from the blues the rhythm and blues you know i have james brown in my head i have elvis presley all these people like running into that's what i was telling you before like i have the drum beat and i see myself on stage while i'm playing those you know riffs and then the lyrics come comes later sometimes you know uh, i have the chorus coming and i i need to go to the guitar and start playing it but then really it's it's um it's rare mm, i play yeah. guitar first yeah it's like it's it's a it's an attachment from my body you know like whoa i need to be my my <laughs> my how do you say like yeah continuation my, of your my arm. continuation exactly exactly yeah <laughs> yeah but now let's get to my jar of random topics and see <laughs> what we are going to talk now so let's pick uh, we are going to pick two so the first one is uh, best moments so if you think about your life what's the best moment of your life the one that you feel like it was the imp one of the most important if not the most important one wow um it's a hard one <laughs> you mean you mean like professionally or you know in general in, in general but if you want if it's too much thinking about in general no, no, that's fine. just one you can also you know, go like, professionally i think i i can't have you the, i am uh, i know the i know the answer <laughs> because <laughs> like we were we were talking about before i think this is my best time of my life right now yeah yeah. Because I really enjoy it. You are nice. You are kind, and I really into the moment, and I'm having fun. And I thank you so much for being here and let me. Thank you. Uh, uh, you know, like talking about my stuff, my music. So this is the best time of my life right now. Yeah, <laughs> nice. That, then let's pick another one. Let's see what we are getting. Let's see if there is something different from other times. I feel that those two are quite often coming out from the jar. But it's 
embarrassing moment. So, if you think about your musical career, for example, on the stage, did did, did it ever did it ever happen? that you did something wrong or something embarrassing happened? Well, I have a couple, I guess. So I was in Lucer. Um, it was like um, um, New Year's Eve. So I remember I was playing with my band and I was like giving on, giving everything I got, uh, give it all out. <laughs> and at one point I see this guy drunk coming to the stage and I was like, oh, you know, like a zombie. And it was my pedal board there. He had a beer, you know, holding like, and I was like, okay, but I'm, I'm kind of nice with people. So I'm, I'm really like trying to have him have fun. So, but luckily there was also people who were helping me. So they brought him down stage. Um, but then something also happened to me. Uh, embarrassing. I remember one day it was, I was in Los Angeles and, it was the mint the club the mint called the mint uh ray charles probably played there and it wasn't it wasn't embarrassing but it was good so i mean i i remember this girl uh coming on stage and putting on her knees and start doing like oh alex oh, alex you know something like really like out of uh i didn't expect that so it was yeah. embarrassing but you know it was kind of cool so embarrassing uh, embarrassing. Uh, uh, maybe one one time happened that uh, my my guitar, uh, you know, because I'm I'm really picky on when I play. You know, everything has to work. Okay, so if something doesn't work, you know, I'm a Virgo, so I need to like be <laughs> everything like has to be set yeah. up. So when sometimes, so I remember this gig was like, oh, the the guitar. Uh, receiver wasn't you know didn't work so I was I feel embarrassed because I want to give to people everything I got in that moment and something doesn't happen I feel like shame and blame or something like that so but I I, I have to I have the plan B so I just switch it into the amp and that's it but you know in that moment I feel embarrassed because I don't like it yeah yeah it it, it makes sense it's you know uh, well people are not um, aware that uh, we start this interview way before, but we had some technical problems <laughs> and f for some reason nothing was working, <laughs> at least with my audio. Or, well, so I felt that embarrassing moment uh, because I was, okay, I have to do this interview and then uh, I cannot provide a good a good uh, um how to say platform mm -hmm. where to do it i was like oh my god why is not working why everything is like this uh -huh. then computer just shut down for some weird reason at the, at okay. the moment but yeah but here we are. Are. yeah here we are so that's in the past and who cares yeah so yeah we but it's what it's fun to thinking <laughs> I know, I About... know, but thank you for saying that because we were there, I was there for you, we were calm and, you know, yeah. we found out the way and now we are live, so. Yeah, you know, so, and everything is fine, so. <laughs> everything is great. Yeah, but now let's talk about the most important topic, that is pizza. You told me that you love pizza and that's amazing, but uh, what's your favorite pizza? My favorite pizza is the vegetarian pizza because I like to see all the vegetables on it and I can really enjoy the taste of the ground. I like the colors of those yeah. veggies. I really like the mixture between the tomato, the mozzarella and eggplants. I can see pepperoni. I can see, I can really see zucchini. I really like it because it's really full of stuff. I like also margarita, but when I see like, more stuff like that and i can feel like full like with you know good stuff makes me makes me happy yeah yeah and then there is the question 
because the world is dividing in two. Pineapple on pizza and pineapple not on pizza. So what do you think about this topic, this important topic that divide the world? In Los Angeles, I found out that I, I, I really discovered this beautiful match between um, watermelon into the salad. So uh, between like the salt, because you, you put the watermelon um, on, on this like uh, form that it's made by uh, uh, Himalayan salt. So you yeah. put the watermelon in cubes and then make it makes it like a little bit cook just to make the, uh, to get the flavor and then you put it into the salad and it's so beautiful the taste it's delicious but pineapple on the, on the pizza no <laughs> you know uh now that you were saying about about the watermelon i remember my first time in finland before way before moving uh i went to a place to eat and they had uh, those big salads and i took one and there was watermelon inside of it for me it was weird because i'm i don't like having a sweet and salt together i'm a bit picky when it's it comes mm -hmm. to taste but uh, yeah i ate a that it, it 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 was okay it was a, a watermelon in the salad make makes more sense than pineapple on pizza in my in my opinion <laughs> yeah also because if you try to put the watermelon uh, on this in, in salt like a uh, himalayan salt it's really like it gives a, like a really nice texture i give um, i give it a try and was like wow this is really interesting because it wasn't it wasn't that sweet it it got really nice uh, taste yeah and where did you eat the worst pizza uh, nice okay i think it was you know was like a like a drugstore in, in in los angeles somewhere and was like a slice of pizza that i should have never never done that but you know like a little tiny pizza that you when you're really hungry you're like you would eat like a car you know everything like really like a tire or something and you can see that little piece of like art that is not <laughs> actually pizza but you know yeah and where did you eat the best pizza? Mm, the best pizza hey, here. There's a lot of beautiful places here around. Um, also, I think there's a nice restaurant here <clears throat> where they make pizza uh, in carbon. Like uh, it's a carbon, 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 like uh, the uh, the flour combined with carbon. The, yeah, it's carbon flour, carbon flour. So it's yeah, black. yeah, the, the black one. Yeah, the black one. Yeah, the black one. There's another restaurant really cool and it's a little thin, but also like a lot. Of, I, I like when the pizza has a, it's like an apple. Uh, uh, it's, it's made by, I, I think, a Napolitan style that has the curb. Yeah. Fluffy and you can put the ricotta inside. So it's like, ah, yeah, it's that's, really that's cool. The best. Yeah, the best. Yeah. yeah. But now ricotta there is yeah now there is uh, the moment of the question because um at the end of every interview i ask each of my guests to leave a question for, to answer the question that the the previous um guest left and to leave another question then so now it's the moment that you are going to answer to a question and then you can leave a, qu a question that can be whatever you want. Anything, anything. So the question that the previous guest left is why everybody tell that Finland is a summer country, but Finland is a winter country. Okay. <laughs> so he, he experienced that the people were 
telling him all the time that uh, Finland is a summer country. But he was thinking, why? why? It's a, actually winter country. Winter, why, why someone... exactly. <laughs> yeah, so what, what do you think? Why people t are telling him that Finland is a summer country? Uh, because they feel their heart is warm because they love the country. So I think they they enjoy it. Yeah. And maybe, you know, the, the time in summer where it can be hot, a little bit warmer than it is. Maybe they enjoy it. Uh, you know, some places. Yeah. Being around outside, I guess. Yeah. I was also thinking maybe, you know, it, it can be the festivals because there are a lot of festivals. Yeah, a lot of music. Summer, and then there is those uh, long nights, long day, I mean. The, the sun oh. is not really going down. Yeah, so also for that's, that. That, that. That's maybe. But the, as an Italian, when I f thought about Finland back in time. It, it was always like winter and Santa Claus and things like that. So it it was a, for me it was a surprise. But apparently, someone think that Finland is a summer country. So <laughs> welcome. But it's 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 a it's a winter <laughs> and a summer country. It can be both. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I like the vision of the the, the festivals. Though. You know, yeah. there's a long day. The day the day is longer and you can enjoy more outside here in yeah. italy now you know we have the sun set at like 7 7 p.m and 7 30 and I, I don't like it i want the sun to be like up all the time <laughs> here is going to be dark pretty soon in october october november november and november is bad november is bad okay. D december if december is christmas time so it's a bit more of light up and hopefully there is going to be snow so the snow is going to to help because if it's uh, if there is no snow it's just dark why the snow gives some you know some light okay. Okay. <laughs> but yeah it's time for you to leave a question for the next guest Okay, okay. For the next guest, so um, mm, huh. uh, have you ever tried? Um, <laughs> I will say, I will ask, have you ever tried pineapple pizza? <laughs> well, you can ask. So it's a, it's okay. a good one to relate to to metal yeah, pizza. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. So. We are at the end of this uh, episode of Metal Pizza. So thank you so much for being my guest. It was a, a pleasure to talk with you. And uh, I can't wait to hear your new music. So let's hope that uh, it will be released not too, too, in too much time. Okay. <laughs> but um, would you like to say something to people that are watching or listening this episode? First of all, thank you so much, Christina. It was amazing to having me here with you and all the all your people. They're gonna see this uh, even live and your uh, on your channel, and they can follow me on my website alexcolrocks.com, uh, my Facebook Alex Cole, YouTube Alex Cole Rocks, so they can see my you know videos. I have a lot of live videos uh, from my shows, from you know Bad Boy Rocker, the video, the official video from the movie Seeing Your Mom. With the movie cut, with the movie scene cut in it, it's in it's on my YouTube channel, Alex Colrux. and even here, you know, this is my Italian uh, channel. But you know, it's um, it's all great. I mean, like people need to understand that everything it's uh, doable. If we really feel that we can do something, it's gonna be happen. But stay strong and make really like something beautiful for your life and be inspired by music and play every day uh live the present live in the moment because that like i said before is the best day of your life because that's is the best moment of your life and um, don't forget it like breathe meditate walk and eat well eat good pizza <laughs> okay <laughs> yeah 
Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Christina. Thank you so much.